see what we got here. Here we go. Happy Father's Day to all as well. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm great, man. First of all, all right. thank you for the opportunity. Second of all, happy Father's Day. Good looking, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity as well, bro. And for those who don't know, me and Black Attack linked up in a very hilarious situation. But uh, <laughs> let me give let me give a little bit of background and then because Black Attack probably doesn't know the whole story right. as well as the viewers. Um uh, like I said, thank everybody for joining. This is episode 141, and how me and Black Attack linked up was I was at work one day, and one of my coworkers was like, um, there's Black Attack. Uh, you know, my, my father worked with him, and, uh, you know, he's coming in the building right now. So, you know, he had the mask on. We're going through this COVID thing at the time. Right. So uh, he comes in and I'm like, uh, you know, I introduce myself and he goes along with the story. But come to find out, he was part of that group. It's a trio called Black Attack. Are you familiar with them? <laughs> nah, I, I know I heard of, a, of another Black Attack. Um, I don't know if they're from overseas or whatever the case, but it, yeah, it was a few of them. It was a few of them. <laughs> You know what but I mean? The, but the crazy thing is, and I'm asking him questions left and right about correct records. He's agreeing and nodding and blah, right, blah, right. blah. Say. So yeah, we take the photo. I, yeah. So luckily, I get a DM from your son in the middle of the night and says, yes, hey, sir. that's not Black Attack. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Not at all, man. I couldn't believe that, though. The fact that he went along with that, like. Oh, oh you know yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. crazy to me, man. But yeah, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, and it led to us meeting and uh, getting this interview taken care of. So I'm very thankful for that opportunity. That's a fact. Um, That's a fact. I appreciate it, man. No doubt. Uh, for those who may not have known or forgot or who are new to you, can you take us back to where you were born and raised? Yeah, I was born in New York City, Roosevelt Island. You know what I'm saying? I come from there. Um, you know, it's pretty much it's pretty much the same old story. You know what I mean? Everybody want to be a rapper. Everybody want to be famous, all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I pretty much came up dolo as far as, like, the, the, the music part of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just started rapping on my own. You know, just me amongst my boys and all that. And then wind up connecting with, you know, this one, that one, the third. And, you know what I mean? How it go from there. And then everything just took off from there. Right. Can you take us back to uh, a life of Black Attack growing up in the early years? Uh, what was the life like as a teenager growing up? It was it was kind of wild. Like for those that don't know, you know, what I'm saying I'm I'm, uh, I'm biracial. So, you know, what I'm saying my mother's white. My, my real father was black. You know, what I'm saying. So, I mean, you know, my my mother's side of the family was pretty much all Jewish. You know, what I'm saying. So I came up pretty much following that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, not really following it, but just like, you know, that was the that was the only religion I really knew as far as that goes. You know what I'm saying? So it was, you know, pretty much trying to separate myself and not be too much on one side of this and too much on one side of that. But all my friends was crazy. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I wound up coming around them and, you know what I'm saying? Like my man Pete and E. Lover and Light and Huey and, you know what I'm saying? Like just my, my community was pretty much diverse like that. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't nothing crazy, but it was just, you know, enough to keep me sane and, you know, just keep me going the way I'm going now, you know? Right. Any obstacles you had to face or endure growing up uh, during your teenage years? I mean, as far as as far as that goes, I mean, just the whole, you know, in the beginning, it was the biracial jokes, the Oreo cookie, the this, the that, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? Nothing the way I could say, yeah, you know, my life could have been this or, you know, something of that nature. I mean, it was just regular teenage, you know, re regular teenage trying to bully, but I, they ain't never bullied me like that. So I'm all right. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? Take us back to Black Attack. Who were some of your uh, earlier influences musically before you started getting into hip hop? Um, well, the biggest one for me, obviously, is going to be the Pioneers, Run DMC. Um, I was a real big EPMD fan. You know what I'm saying? Like me and my man Lover, um, you know, he was my DJ for a while. So it'd be Black Attack and DJ E Lover. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, he'd be every sermon, I'd be PMD. You know what I'm saying? So we run around doing that. And I mean, but. You know, once I started rapping, like my biggest, biggest, I say my biggest inspirer would be Redman. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like I really, really, really like loved that dude. You know what I'm saying? Like everything he was doing at that time. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and then the Nas has come around and and the rest of those guys, which elevates it, which, which pretty much made it harder for us at that time. You know, especially me, like. 
look at look at my competition at that time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I got to go against Nas, Biggie, Redman, like you name them, the Wu Tang, like you name them. At that point, I mean, that was your competition. You know what I'm saying? So it was, you know what I mean? But looking up to all those dudes is pretty much what got me to be better and, and just do better all the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, earlier on, uh, like I said before, music, what was the first uh, visual thing you've seen as far as hip hop uh, firsthand uh, coming out of your house, neighborhood? What did you see hip hop wise uh, first uh, hand? Um, I would say probably like raw bass, DJ Easy Rock. You know what I mean? When they dropped that, uh, that It Takes Two. That that Gucci, you know, that little Gucci suit he had on the green joint, like everybody wanted that. You know what I'm saying? And that's, <laughs> that's what that's what I think that's what really drove me though. Like that that dragged me right into it, big like firsthand. Like yeah, I'm gonna be that. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna do that. And you know, I just I love the whole hip hop thing. Like what you know when when you listen to hip hop, man. If if you listening to maybe your favorite artist or even not your favorite artist, but somebody gonna say something that resonates with you. You know what I'm saying? And, and it don't matter what background you come from or whatever the case. Like, it's just no matter what, hip hop going to grab you some way. And I just wanted to be a part of that. So how did you eventually get involved? A lot of MCs would say they were break dancers, graffiti artists, uh, wanted to get into DJ. How did Black Attack uh, eventually get into hip hop? Well, it, it's funny because I think it was I think it was for my 13th birthday. Um, all the stores around my way would close early. Right, because we lived on an island and all that. So everything would close at like nine, ten o'clock. So we used to have to get on a train to go to the city to grab 40s or, you know, do something like that. And that night we actually had like a dissing session on each other, but we was making it rhyme and all that. And that night, I, I don't even remember what I said, but I know I went home saying it all night long. And I was like, yo, I'm a rap. Like, I'm nice. I'm a rap. I mean, and it was probably a two, four bar diss or something like that to my man or something like that. But that's what that's what dragged me. Like, I was like, yeah. I could do this. And then from there, it was just freestyling, freestyling, freestyling. Like, for years, that's all I would do. I would just freestyle. Like, you give me a topic, and I'll rhyme for hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can remember back in the day, early around that time, I would be with my man Molly. It'd be me, my man Molly, my man Pop, and my man Sean O. And we would get a cab probably about, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning. we shoot up town, go get some bud, and ride around all day. And I'd just be rhyming all day long. Just freestyling all day long, never writing songs, none of that. You know what I'm saying? Just, just rhyming, right? Right. What, what was? Uh, give us a time frame about the, about this time. Um, this had to be around, I say, in between '88 and '90. Okay. Like 1988 and 1990, and then say around maybe '91, '92, I started taking it a little more serious. You know what I mean? Like I take, I take the two radios, put them together. You know what I'm saying? One play the beat, one record, and I'd just be trying to make songs, but it never really worked out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I was too into freestyling and all that. Like, I just felt like I was the freestyle king. Nobody could touch me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I right. just kept on doing that. But then right around, like I say, around 93, um, Grandmaster, Grandmaster D from Houdini was having a birthday party, and uh, he wanted me to come and perform and all that. But I still had no songs. You know what I mean? I was just, I was just a rapper. And... Uh, Smooth B was there, Coogee Rap was there. It was just a bunch of dudes. So I'm like, yeah, I gotta show my ass. Like I gotta, you know what I mean? I gotta do my thing. So I get up there and I just start, I just start rhyming. I'm shouting out all my peoples in the crowd and I'm saying people coming through the back door and I'm just going crazy with it and everybody was just giving me love. Like, so I was like, all right, yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. Like, I'm gonna do this for real. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Did you uh, pursue uh, being a solo artist or was the group thing first for you uh, earlier on? Before record deals, were you a solo artist or were you in group? No, nah, I was a solo artist. I was always I was always a solo artist. And then um, come around, I think I had to be like late 93, early 94. Uh, we hooked up, I hooked up with, um, with uh, Smoked Out Productions, right? And that was, uh, that was me, Stress, Agony, and Probs was already a part of that. But they was already kind of established, you know what I'm saying? So... You know, my man Twin, my man Sterl, and all them plugged me in with John Capon, and he was running that, and it, it was a good fit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it fit. Like, we all got along. We all smoked crazy, so it was, you know what I'm saying? It was a good fit, and I just ran with that for a minute, and then, you know, when that didn't work out, I was going to go back to being a solo artist, but I had already kind of hooked up with Tariq, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, he got me the single deal through um, Correct for Verbal Attack. And I was still running, you know, we still was just, he, we was all solo artists. Everybody was just a solo artist, you know what I mean? And, and Rick came up with the idea to do links years later, but for the most part, it's always been a solo thing. 
Right. Can you take us back earlier on to some of the dues you had to pay to uh, get your name out there a little more, uh, whether it was solo or during this uh, smoked out productions uh, situation? In all honesty, like we 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 never really dealt with nobody in the beginning. It was always us. You know what I'm saying? Like we did everything on our own. We pressed up singles. We you know we went to the How Can I Be Downs, the Jack the Rappers, you know, and tried to put our name out there on a on a solo tip. I mean, you already know when it's at, at that time back in the day, you had to be outside. Like it wasn't, there was no internet. There was nothing like that. So in order to get around at that time, you had to really be outside. Like, you know, you can't just say like, yeah, we outside. Like, no, you had to be outside, bro. You know what right. I mean? So it right. was, it was really that. But, you know, as, it, as time went on, you know what I'm saying? Um, when I hooked up with like Vic, you know, the mighty VIC and, you know, Mike G from Hydra and those guys, like that's what pretty much pushed the envelope. Like they were, they were on a level that I wasn't on yet. You know what I'm okay. saying? And they, right. they were the ones that really pushed it and believed and was like, yo, we could do this. Like, you're nice. Let's do something. You know what I mean? Uh, you guys end up dropping Back Up Kid in 1994, I believe, with All oh, Yeah and Phases. What kind of reaction did that get when it hit the streets? Oh, that was crazy. That was crazy. Like, and I never even expected it. That was the first song that I ever really, the All oh, Yeah was the first song that I ever really recorded on my own like that. You know what I mean? And, and that was, you know, through Smoked Out Productions and all that. But it was, um... I, the smoked out productions thing was crazy because when we'd be moving through the streets, it was like 50 of us constantly, you know what I'm saying? And it was just, too, it was too many people, you know what I'm saying? It was too many people. We was always in some shit. It was, you know what I'm saying? It was just too, too much, too much going on too fast. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it didn't last. You know what I mean? Like the buzz we had was incredible. You know what I mean? Like people, we'd be at shows like in Miami, we'd be at the How Could I Be Downs and the Jack the Rappers and all that, and we'd be performing right behind our boot camp click. You know what I'm saying? Like they'd be, you know, tearing down the stage and we coming on after them. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just doing it and, and the reaction was crazy, but it was just, it was too much, too many different personalities, too many temperaments. You know what I'm saying? So it, it just, it was never going to work. Right. Uh, were you also part of the Styles Bok Bok uh, situation in 95? Yeah, definitely. That was, um, that was actually our first real, like, after the all year, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was our first, like, single single, you know what I'm saying? Because we were supposed to do an EP and all that. But, you know, as like I said, like, around that time, it just kind of got crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? With everybody feeling like everybody wanted to be the boss, you know what I'm saying? And, I mean, it's all of us, I, me included, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody thought that we were more than what we were when, I mean, we really were, but we just, you know what I'm saying? We had nothing to show for us. So, if, you know, if we could rewind time and everybody just fall in line and do what they had to do, then it probably would have been something crazy. You know what I mean? Right. All, all during this time, are you shopping a demo as a solo artist? Um, I wouldn't say I was shopping a demo, but I was definitely still moving around trying to be a solo artist. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, as far as when we had the SOP thing, I was committed to that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't want to really do anything else other than get that off the ground because I believed in what we was doing. I, heard, I knew the music we had. Everything was fire. You know, everything we was putting out was fire. You know what I'm saying? And then it was just like, but then once that situation ended, it was like, yeah, I'm going back to being a solo artist anyway. That's always what I wanted to do. Okay. Once the SOP thing ended, where does Black Attack find itself? And how did you end up over at Correct Records? Well, um, Tariq, me and Tariq knew, um, we had mutual friends and all that. And, uh, you know, he, they're a little bit older than I am by a few years and all that. So they were already connected. And, like, it was pretty much just a, an immediate connection. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got with Tariq. He was already working on God Connections. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he had his squad already. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then, of course, he already had the buzz because he's part of the Beat Nuts and all that. You know what I'm saying? So that's when he um he pretty much plugged me in with, like, VIC and the rest of those dudes. And that's how I got the single through Correct because he was like, yo, they want to do something with you and all that. So I was like, yeah, we could do that. You know what I mean? And I did the single with them. And then, you know, they went under. But the single still popped, though. That's probably one of my, you know, one of my biggest songs to this day. Right. Uh, take us back to uh, holding it down uh, and verbal attack in 97. What was that session like? What was the reaction like when it hit the streets? Take us back to that uh, moment in time. Well, all right. So I get the beats from Vic and I'm like, bro, this is crazy. Like this beat is crazy. The verbal attack, like the holding it down was fire too. But when I heard the verbal attack, I was like, yo, this is going to be crazy. So you know, I called Probs. I'm like, yo, Probs, come on, man. Like, you got to jump on this joint with me because everybody always, everybody loved us when we were on songs together. So I was like, I'm going to keep that momentum from the SOP and we're just going to keep that moving. And then I called Reek, obviously, because he got me the deal. So I'm like, yo, you got to be honest with me. Um, and when we dropped it, it was, it was huge. Um, I used to get the call from, uh, from L.A. that the song was going on, that Battle of the Beats they used to have out there back at that time. 
And uh, I think that I think it won like five, six nights on a row in a row. So they put it on the, you know, they put it on the Wall of Fame or whatever they did out there. And the buzz was just crazy. But you know, with them going under, it was, you know, what I mean, it wasn't really nothing we could do after that. Just keep it moving, keep the momentum going. Did you uh, have a deal in place, or was it for just a single at the time? It was just a single. It was a single deal. Um, obviously, it was a single deal with intent to do more. You know what I'm saying? But it never, it never materialized because of whatever they had going on over there. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, where do you find yourself after Correct Goes Under? I see you got with Ghetto uh, Gold uh, with Ruckus or something in that nature. Yeah, that was um, after that. Um, I was still working with Vic. Um, now Juju's in the picture from the Beat Nuts, Psycho Less. You know what I'm saying? Like now, you know, I'm getting cool with these dudes and making a couple of songs here and there with them. And uh, Ruckus did that ghetto, that, uh, I, don't, I forget the name of the album, Sound Bombing. They did the sound bombing, and uh, Vic was like, yo, we, you know, we should do a joint for that. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So I dropped the My Crown. Now, that's another one that was just like the buzz created off of that was insane. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, like when you think about it now, there's so many different things I should have did or could have did, you know what I'm saying? But just, just didn't do them because at the time when you're moving, you ain't thinking about all that. Like, you, you know, you take what's in front of you and you run with that. You know what I mean? And uh and that's how that worked. Like, so we, you know, we still had the buzz though. You know what I'm saying? We were still big. And then I wind up after, after that single from the Raucous, I wind up meeting Honda, DJ Honda. And then we were just on a whole, like a whole nother level of just recording and doing shows. And, you know, he had his own thing going. I really didn't have much going. So it was at that time, it was a perfect fit. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean?